patients with lupus may have more acute seizures rather than an epileptic condition. Fellow Homo sapiens, now who knows about the autoimmune epilepsies? And who even thinks about putting the two terms autoimmune and epilepsy together? Well, today you will hear from epileptologist Lucas Orishana all about what autoimmune disorders are, how they can affect other parts of our body, including the brain. And you also might recognize some of the other diseases more commonly spoken of, such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and more. Because yes, seizures and epilepsy can form part of these disorders. My name is Lucas Orellana. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I'm an adult neurologist specialized in epilepsy. Um, I work in the Institute of Neurosciences of Buenos Aires, uh, where I am at this moment uh, to talk to you. And um, also worth mentioning, I think, is that we met through uh, the International League Against Epilepsy Young Epilepsy section. Yeah, we're doing this project on stigma, which is really, really important. It's a really nice project. Um, we hope to have uh, results very soon. Well, there'll be soon be a fantastic questionnaire for people to share amongst people both with and without epilepsy. So, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Our chat today kind of came about because of a paper that you um, wrote about an autoimmune epilepsy. Um, can you tell us a bit about autoimmune epilepsies, please? Because I don't think they are so well understood. Um, yes, within the well, within the general public, but even amongst clinicians and neurologists. Comorbidities impose a heavy burden for people uh, with an epilepsy. Um, we can mention some systemic comorbidities such as cardiovascular uh, diseases, gastrointestinal uh, problems. Um, for, for instance, psychiatric comorbidities are very much known to be a high comorbidity in epilepsy in general. Okay, so... Uh, there is an increasing evidence that systemic autoimmune disorders uh, have a strong relationship with people that, who suffer from epilepsy. Okay, so um, I thought that it was a really nice uh, topic just to mention uh, since these two entities have a very, 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 very strong relationship, as I, as I told you some minutes ago. The epidemiological studies have shown that um, there is a high prevalence of uh, systemic autoimmune disorders in people who suffer from epilepsy and vice versa. Uh, also, epilepsy uh, has shown that systemic comorbidities, so, uh, autoimmune comorbidities uh, disorders are be, uh, have been more prevalent in this uh, condition as well. Paul, is it causation or correlation? Do we know? What is under investigation is that maybe the pathogenesis of both uh, have a lot of inflammation and neuroinflammation uh, in common. Okay. So neuroinflammation is one of the uh, topics that, the hot topics that say uh, in ep on epilepsy investigation because uh, it seems that many uh, markers, many inflammatory markers have been associated with the appearance and the persistence and the continuity of seizures uh, in epilepsy. But let me just uh, tell you a little bit about autoimmune disorders in general, because maybe some people uh, are not very used to this uh, name. Autoimmune disorders are those disorders, those entities, where uh, there is a dysfunction of our immune system. What is that? We have uh, our immune system that contains a lot of structures, including blood cells, for instance, uh, that protect us against harmful substances, such as viruses, bacteria, uh, bacteria, uh, for instance, harmful substances that are from outside our body. Uh, our body has a lot of soldiers. Uh, um, they are immune cells, and they have a lot of weapons, such as antibodies. These antibodies go and attack these harmful substances in order for, in order to erase those 
uh, substances which are harmful or potentially harmful to our body. Uh, but what is the problem about autoimmune disorders? Uh, our immune system uh, is not working that well and confuse uh, our healthy tissues who should be protected by our immune system uh, to harmful substances. So instead of protecting us, uh, antibodies go, for instance, uh, go and attack our uh, in our pro uh, our our uh, organs or tissues from our body, healthy tissues. Is that like what can happen in types of arthritis sometimes? Exactly. Like, so yes, yes. Like, is it rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah. There is a confusion uh, of our immune system that um, thinks that some healthy tissues that from our body are strange to us, and instead of protected go and attack it. So what happens with, with these problems about this, this dysfunction leads to the sometimes the destruction of some tissues organ, and the dysfunction of some organs. Mm -hmm. And this can be, let's say, the areas that could be involved in these uh, patients could be as many as many organs we have in the body. Uh, some of the most frequent are blood vessels, muscles, joints, um, of course, uh, blood cells, and of course, for example, uh, well, brain, mm -hmm. brain, <laughs> and let's say more generally, nervous system, both central and peripheral, could be uh, affected because it's, that's, it's, it's another type of tissue. Many organs can be may, may be affected in one patient, but it's let's get it here. This is going to be the continuation. Um, one patient might have one or more than one autoimmune disorders. So it's not that one patient has only one autoimmune disorders and it's not possible to have both or, or many of, of them. So autoimmune disorders are much more prevalent uh, in on women and uh, especially young and middle-aged women, generally speaking. There are a lot of exceptions, but just uh, it's good to know that this population may be probably the most affected according to the stat statistics that, of course, they, they have a lot of range from, 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 from all the, the information that they provide. Uh, sometimes because it's a little bit difficult to diagnose them, and it's a lot of uh, clinic eye uh, to get to the diagnosis of these entities. So what is important is to know that uh, they exist. There are, there are many, many autoimmune disorders. Uh, some of them that I can mention maybe sometimes affect more the rheumatological uh, aspects of the patient, such as uh, lupus, uh, systemic lupus, maybe it's a little bit uh, uh, hurt. Uh, Shoren syndrome, which was the, the recent publication that I did, as you, you told us. Um, maybe sometimes uh, these autoimmune disorders affect more, for instance, in the, the bowel, bowel diseases, like uh, Crohn disease, for instance. Um, sometimes we have the celiac disease, uh, which is extremely prevalent overall, but and diabetes type 1 is another example that maybe we don't uh, are very used to the autoimmune association, but it's also an autoimmune disorder, diabetes type 1. Uh, so imagine that it's extremely prevalent. Um, sometimes we, we are not very used to, 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 to match it with an autoimmune disorder. Yeah, never make that connection. I didn't know that. Exactly. That's, oh, my goodness. That diabetes type 1. Which is the, the the one that 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 starts uh, during the the youngsters. So, how on earth then are these autoimmune disorders related to the epilepsies? Then, as I told you before, uh, many organs can be uh, affected by autoimmune disorders, and if brain uh, is affected, uh, there are going to be a lot of process uh, of processes uh, that happens in the brain. Uh, that are going to be immune-mediated. Uh, 
antibodies that go and attack uh, our brain may be a cause of uh, provoking seizures in, in these patients. Uh, a lot of uh, molecules that we have to connect, communicate the, the, um, in an immunological way, like cytokines, interleukins, etc. Uh, if they are dysfunctioning, maybe they can provoke uh, alter uh, electric activity and they can uh, provoke the seizures. Wow. And we have a lot of uh, uh, more indirect, uh, let's say, uh, ways to, to that, that these autoimmune disorders provoke seizures. For instance, uh, metabolic metabolic disorders that are uh, secondary to these autoimmune disorders, such as uh, hypoglycemias, hypocalcemias, for instance. Sometimes uh, one of the, the, the most known, um, let's say, mechanisms is the vascular uh, ones, the vascular disease that could be a complication of patients, for instance, in lupus, uh, they produce some autoantibodies that are maybe attack blood vessels and they attack, uh, let's say, the circulation in the brain and they can damage the brain and produce some seizures secondary to that, especially focal seizures in these cases. There are many factors associated uh, with autoimmune disorders, uh, most of them immune-mediated, and sometimes secondary to the complications that these autoimmune disorders provoke in the body. Uh, so these are the, 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 the ideas that how this uh, can provoke decisions in these patients. And so if a person, say, um, so unfortunately, you know, develops lupus and it goes to their brain and they have some seizures, is... Are those seizures likely to be, if one can, I don't know if you can almost put it like this, but yeah, are those seizures likely to be a one-off, uh, you know, or just a few they may have as the result of lupus in a period of time? Or are they likely to have basi basically be diagnosed with epilepsy and have it indefinitely? Um, when we talk about autoimmune disorders and uh, epilepsy, we can better say that uh, patients who suffer from autoimmune disorders and uh, may have some uh, epileptic uh, uh, phenomena, right. okay, uh, we can divide them in acute seizures, but some of them, some, some of them may probably only have acute seizures during a short time. Like a flare up. Exactly. Some patients may develop, might, may develop uh, an epileptic condition, okay, where an enduring predisposition to seizures uh, goes further in time. So it can be one or the other. Sometimes they may have seizures which are not defined as epileptic as such because they're just like a couple in one period of their lives, but it, they can actually become a full epilepsy long term. We just don't know. That's correct. For instance, in the case of lupus, we have some around third, third, uh, around a third of patients with lupus may develop uh, neural lupus, uh, which is a condition that combines sometimes psychiatric symptoms and epileptic symptoms. Um, in this case, uh, usually, usually uh, lupus patients uh, or patients with lupus may have uh, probably more acute seizures rather than an epileptic conditions. But if you have an autoimmune disorder, okay, you may have uh, acute seizures, like you have said, in short periods of time or uh, during a determined uh, period of time. And in some cases, you might have um, an, an enduring predisposition, like an epileptic condition uh, during the time. It can be both, both cases, yes. It's amazing because this is not widely publicized, in my experience anyway, that people, because there are actually quite a few famous people, well, that I've seen, I don't know what is fame, but people rather well known who have said, actually, I've had lupus or I have lupus, but nobody ever mentions potentially developing seizures or an epilepsy. They never, ever talk about it. For instance, in lupus, one of the 11 criteria to diagnose lupus 
are seizures. It's one of the 11 criteria. So seizures is um, a symptom uh, that could be, of course, not seizures alone, but among other, other criteria uh, that is met. Uh, we can get a diagnosis of lupus by uh, using that criteria as well. It's, let's say, it supports the, the diagnosis of, of that, for instance. But it's, it's, really, it's really good to, to remark that because uh, neurological involvement in autoimmune disorders, we have a lot of statistics that have numbers that range from zero to uh, um, 800, okay? Yeah. But uh, it's, it's not very known, uh, the, 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 the actual numbers, but they are not rare because neurological involvement is uh, quite frequent in autoimmune disorders and epilepsy uh, is not the exception. So, yes, it's good to know because maybe when we, we see a patient that has uh, seizures, uh, maybe we can um, uh, face uh, that case in too many years. Maybe we can get a patient that has been previously diagnosed with autoimmune disorder, okay, and uh, starts or presents with a seizure for the first time or the second time or whatever, it's acute seizure. And maybe we have to have in mind that this patient had been previously diagnosed yeah. uh, of an autoimmune disorder because of the implications of treatment. And we have to say that neurological events are something that could happen in these patients, as many others, but in these patients, it's not something that is rare. Yeah. That is one case. And the other scenario uh, would be a patient with a first, or second, or an epilepsy uh, that has been diagnosed uh, recently. And when we start uh, doing all the evaluations, uh, it's good to also, well, always know, especially if that patient has other features, other clinical features that could be suspicious of an autoimmune disorder, it's good to know that that patient uh, does not only uh, suffers from epilepsy, but also we can diagnose an autoimmune disorder uh, in order to make a better treatment and a better uh, follow-up. Yeah, totally. Because so, I, I imagine if even if you treat an autoimmune disease more effectively, you're likely to minimize seizure risk as well, right? So it's like two in one. So you have to, you, I, and I guess with an autoimmune disease, one if one is diagnosed um, accurately, you could say it's kind of a good thing because you know the, the, it's not good, but you know, a good thing because you know the cause and therefore it can be more effectively treated. Two, two things related to that. First of all, uh, you're totally right uh, because we have to treat the overall uh, clinical features of that patient and not only the epilepsy, which may be something that is associated uh, to that. But also, uh, we have to uh, say that generally, people with autoimmune disorders who suffer from seizure and seizures uh, probably might have a little bit more aggressive autoimmune, or that would be a meaning of uh, a little bit more aggressive uh, form of, uh, of, of uh, their autoimmune disorders. Uh, so it's, it's good that uh, we, we pay a lot of attention to that. Thank you for Lucas for covering such an important topic that many people, even some neurologists understandably, haven't been overly familiar with. <music>